What's up, everyone? It's your girl, Leah Love. I'm back again for another episode. If you're new to my channel, I welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. I am a conservative wife, homemaker, and I've been a homeschooler for over 10 years. And I am just here to share my views and to share the things that I have been researching over the past six or seven months. That's really been a red pilling experience for me. And so I not only share it here, but I also share it on my Instagram channel, which is really popping right now. I want to give a shout out to all my followers. I'm now over 5,000 followers. Um, I believe I'm at 5,200 as of this morning. And so once again, shout out to all the new subscribers who's come over from Instagram. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the love. I want to share something that has been on my mind for a while. And ironically, I got a DM on Instagram from one of my followers who was really puzzled by what she has finally realized is a propaganda campaign. So what she was asking me is why, you know, all of a sudden since the pre-election um, campaigns, the last one, that Trump is constantly being uh, accused of being a racist. Um, why everywhere she goes, though she hadn't been following mainstream news in the past, now that she's become more aware because people just keep repeating this and she started doing her own research, but she was just wondering what is it that's going on that is so over the top despite his many denials on video. And I told her to hold on because I was on a podcast last night and Dr. B, shout out to Dr. B, very knowledgeable um, professor. And he shared uh, some documents with me that really made sense because I noticed it in particular after the last debate. And so I'm gonna walk you through a couple of documents, a couple of articles actually, and so that you can do your own research into this and look into what's really been going on behind the scenes, how the news outlets have changed from the way in which they were in the 90s and the early 2000s into what they are today in 2020. And after I show you that, I will come back for more commentary. So let's get started. Okay, so here is the first article um, that Dr. B shared with me last night. And it was really groundbreaking information that I'd never heard of definitely want to share this with you. So what we're looking at is an article from 2013 from the foreignpolicy.com website, as you can see in the browser here. Um, and the title is U.S. Repeals Propaganda Ban Spreads Government Made News to Americans. And so let's scroll down and read a little bit here. For decades, a so-called anti-propaganda law prevented the U.S. government's mammoth broadcasting arm from delivering prop programming to American audiences. But on July 2nd, that came silently to an end with the implementation of a new reform passed in January. The result, an unleashing of thousands of hours per week of government-funded radio and TV programs for domestic U.S. consumption in a reform, initially criticized as a green light for U.S. domestic propaganda efforts. So what just happened? Until this month, a vast ocean of U.S. programming produced by programming board, uh, sorry, broadcasting board of governors such as Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, and the Middle East broadcasting networks could only be viewed or listened to at broadcast quality in foreign countries. The programming varies in tone and quality, but its breadth is vast. It's viewed in more than 100 countries and 61 languages. The topics covers includes human rights abuses in Iran, self-immolation in Tibet, human trafficking across Asia, and the on-the-ground reporting in Egypt and Iraq. The restriction of these broadcasts was due to the Smith-Munt Act, a long-standing piece of legislation that has been amended numerous times over the years, perhaps most consequentially by Arkansas Senator J. William Fulbright. In the 70s, Fulbright was no friend of VOA and Radio Free Europe and moved to restrict them from domestic distribution, saying they should be given the opportunity to take their rightful place in the graveyard of Cold War relics. Fulbright's amendment to the Smith-Munt 
was bolstered in 18, sorry, 1985 by Nebraska Senator Edward Zorinsky, who argued that such propaganda should be kept out of America as to distinguish the U.S. from the Soviet Union, where domestic propaganda is a principal government activity. Zorinsky and Fulbright sowed their amendments on sensible rhetoric. Rhetoric. American taxpayers shouldn't be funding propaganda for American audiences. So did Congress just tear down the American public's last defense against domestic propaganda? BBG spokeswoman Lynn Will insists BBG is not a propaganda outlet, and it's a flagship service such as VOA, present, fair, and accurate news. They don't shy away from stories that don't shed the best light on the U.S., she told the cable. She pointed to the charters of VOA and RFE. Our journalists provide what many people cannot get locally, uncensored news, responsible discussion, and open debate. And we know that currently that's seriously not happening in 2020. A former U.S. government source with knowledge of the BBG says the organization is no Pravda, but it does advance U.S. interests in more subtle ways. In Somalia, for instance, VOA serves as counter-programming to outlets peddling anti-American or jihadist sentiment. Somalis have three options for news, word of mouth, Al-Shabaab, or VOA Somalia. This particularly explains the push to allow BBG broadcasts on local radio stations in the United States. The agency wants to reach diaspora communities such as St. Paul, Minnesota's significant Somali expat community. Those people can get Al-Shabaab, they can get Russia today, but they couldn't get access to their taxpayer-funded news sources like VOA Somalia, the source said. It was silly. Lynn added that the reform was transparent, has a transparency benefit as well. Now Americans will be able to know more about what they are paying for with their tax dollars. Greater transparency is a win-win for all involved, she said. And so with the smith Munt Modernization Act of 2012, which passed as part of the 2013 National Defense Authorization Act and went into effect this month, But if anyone needed a reminder of the dangers of domestic propaganda efforts, the past 12 months provided ample reasons. Last year, two USA Today journalists were ensnared in a propaganda campaign. I will repeat, two USA Today journalists were ensnared in a propaganda campaign after reporting about millions of dollars in back taxes owed by the Pentagon's top propaganda contractor in Afghanistan. And so that reminds me of this recent slew of um, Trump tax, uh, 750, etc. Eventually, one of the co-owners of the firm confessed to creating phony websites and Twitter accounts to smear the journalists anonymously. Additionally, just this month, the Washington Post exposed a counter-propaganda program by the Pentagon that recommended posting comments on a U.S. website run by a Somali expat with readers opposing al-Shabaab. Today, the military is more focused on manipulating news and commentary on the internet, especially social media, by posting material and images without necessarily claiming ownership. So one of the um, comments in this article had a link to another article, which I clicked on, and this is on BuzzFeed, And this was produced in 2012, and it says, Congressman seeks to lift propaganda ban. Propaganda that was supposed to target foreigners could now be aimed at Americans, reversing a longstanding policy, disconcerting and dangerous. An amendment that would legalize the use of propaganda on American audiences is being inserted into the latest defense authorization bill. BuzzFeed has learned. The amendment would strike the current ban on domestic dissemination of propaganda material produced by State Department and the Independent Broadcasting Board of Governors, according to the summary of the law at the House Rules Committee's official website. The tweak to the bill would essentially neutralize two previous acts 
the Smith Munt Act of 1948 and the Foreign Relations Authorization Act in 1987 that has been passed to protect U.S. audiences from our own government's misinformation campaigns. The bipartisan amendment is sponsored by Representative Mac Thornberry from Texas and Rep. Adam Smith from Washington State. In a little noticed press release earlier this week, buried beneath the other high profile issues, in the $642 billion defense bill, including indefinite detention and a prohibition on gay marriage at military institutions, Thornberry warned that in the internet age, the current law ties the hands of American diplomats, diplomatic officials, military, and others by inhibiting our ability to effectively communicate in a credible way. The bill's supporters say that informational material used overseas to influence for foreign audiences is too good not to use at home, and that new techniques are needed to help fight Al-Qaeda, a borderless enemy whose own propaganda reaches Americans online. Critics of the bill say there are ways to keep Americans safe without turning the massive information operation apparatus within the federal government against American citizens. So... This goes on, um, and I will provide the link to this article uh, in the information box below. But I just wanted to clarify a few things by showing you this article, because while the main gist of these uh, articles that were written in 2012 and 2013 was speaking about the government putting out propaganda to control the thinking of America. We notice that there are other powers who have a stake in the narrative in America in 2020, seven to eight years later. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that because you know, if the apparatus is against the current seated uh, president, then they will use the same tactics. And since by law, they have been given the authority to promote um, you know, a widespread propaganda campaign, um, they've just gone buck wild with it. And it's particularly um, telling that, you know, rather than provide full news coverage, both sides, rather than talk about Hillary Clinton having uh, been exposed in the newly declassified document, which shows that she created the whole Russia hoax, they show the emails they show the date, July 26, when uh, Obama was informed by intelligence that Hillary's campaign was had created this uh, propaganda and this targeted attack on him, on Trump, during the campaign. And so Obama knew about it on July 26. And then later that evening is when one of uh, Hillary's uh, campaign individuals went on the news to start spreading the rumors about, oh, we're hearing that Trump is in collusion with Russia in order to hack DNC's emails. That has now been declassified. And along with so many other things that Hillary Clinton did, now it's actually been declassified as real, uh, you know, proof as to who started that propaganda and they, you know, proceeded to do all of these impeachments and whatnot. He completely re repeatedly denied it. And yet now we hear that it all came from uh, Hillary Clinton's camp and that Obama knew about it um, and that he didn't stop it. And so uh, it's good to see this uh, public uh, intel, the security and secret service intelligence now declassifying these documents that have hereto heretofore not been available to the public. Um, and so here on this article, I just want to go through it, even though he's still, you know, anti-Trump, as you can see in this little, you know, uh, caricature here, but he said propaganda in the media. So think about it in terms of what we're seeing today. Propaganda is a tool that's used in media to spread a certain political perspective. Propaganda is not about getting the objective truth of a situation. It's about spreading a message. In the article, are Google's personalized results making us politically partisan? It states, here it is, is an unintended dark side to a search engine that only provides the information we want to see. It cocoons us in an echo chamber of political information that confirms our pre-existing opinions. You search for raw information, but you're getting more of what you already agree with. 
In modern times, propaganda has a twisted effect on the average viewer's perspective. Media can't be a genuine tool for current events and information if some media outlets are just telling people what they want to hear and not considering the full context of a situation. And so this reminds me of um, the fact that I have now downloaded uh, DuckDuckGo, um, uh, you know, another uh, search engine, and then I compare what comes up in that search engine with what comes up in Google. And it's two totally different things. Um, and it's amazing. And I saw that when I first started interview, uh, trying to research David Barton, who had great information about the first uh, Black Americans within the Revolutionary War, who were totally uh, you know, instrumental in the success of the war, how you had Black and white church congregations together defending uh, their cities. And But when I searched him on Google, the top articles were that David Barton uh, debunked David Barton alt right Christian you know uh, racist and this guy has video after video trying to promote the importance and presence of black people I had to go to three pages of searches and most people only look at the first search and they believe whatever media tells them so you know if that's what the internet says it must be true but um, once I you know I had to dig and dig and dig to get to the real stuff. I mean, they have literal full videos on YouTube only about the great black American heroes. And they're calling him, you know, uh, uh, alt-right, uh, conservative, scary, ooh, you know, Christian, ooh, scary. Um, and it's really bad. And they had several articles of people debunking him, calling him, you know, uh, a scary racist conservative who's, who's trying to religiousize America. And it was incredible when I opened my eyes to that, just how biased the mainstream media is. And so what he's saying in this article is absolutely true as far as what's going on today. For example, if the president plans to cut funding for social programs, it's simply propaganda if media outlets parrot his perspective and give no criticism of his policies. These media outlets would just be confirming the president's viewpoint to viewers. If propaganda is allowed to thrive in, a me in media, there will be no genuine democracy. So this was in the medium.com. Uh, this was written in 2018. Uh, so you see the title here. And this is exactly what, though he again is anti-Trump, imagine if the media can't, the whole media apparatus is against Trump. Imagine what happens. And this is why those who are independent or concerning uh, conservative leaning, we are understanding that there's literally no more genuine democracy happening when every single news outlet parrots the same story and barely covers anything else and without proof. And as you might uh, go to my Instagram page where I posted the full video of the Charlottesville incident where everybody's parenting the same, parroting the same thing. Uh, you know, Trump, uh, you know, said that there was good people on both sides. And when I finally saw, because I hadn't seen the full clip, he goes into further detail because he wasn't talking about the white supremacists. And he says it right there in the interview that he was talking about the peaceful protesters and the other people who were there who were simply exercising, you know, their rights to, you know, give their opinion. And so he was not at all referring to the supremacists, but that is the one tiny clip that they have pushed for three and a half years. And then I soon after saw another news report where they were talking about the debates and they're talking about how he's refused to denounce it. And once again, there's that clip they threw in there that he said, you know, there's good people on both sides. Cut. Didn't show the rest of the video. And I said, aha, this is what we're talking about. And to give you the proof, I'm going to show you this. So I'm on DuckDuckGo.com, which is the search engine I was talking to you about. So let's review this. Let's look at now the mainstream media, which is really just a propaganda arm. They're not actual journalists anymore. They are paid puppets um, and they don't ever give two sides to the story. It's all about one thing. Let's read through this because I noticed this the night of the debate. Let me read you the titles. Trump refuses to condemn white supremacists. That's the only thing that came out of the debate, which I have the transcript, which I'm going to show you in a little bit where he did condemn them. I have a video after video after video where he says he absolutely 100% condemns the KKK and 
all the other white supremacist organizations. He just re uh, released the Platinum Black America Plan, where he has now designated the KKK as a, uh, a hate group. And yet still, after all evidence, here we are, HuffingtonPost.com. Trump refuses to condemn white supremacists. News.yahoo.com. Trump refuses, refuses to condemn white supremacists in Tuesday's blah, blah, blah. Uh, another one, news.yahoo.com. Uh, Trump refuses to uh, condemn white supremacy. Uh, Theguardian.com. Donald Trump refuses to condemn white supremacists. Are you seeing a trend here? They all have the same script. They all post the same news and they post it 24 seven. Uh, Crooksandlers.com. Trump again refuses to condemn white supremacists. Transcript, Trump did not refuse to condemn white. So that's the one, so a federalist. So yes, he, they got the truth. Anyway, theatlantic.com, Trump refuses to condemn white nationalism. Thegrio.com, Trump refuses to condemn white supremacy, tells Proud Boys. CBS58.com, Trump refuses to condemn white supremacists. Thesnoops.com, did Trump refuse to condemn white supremacists at debate? CNN, y'all's favorite people. Trump refuses to denounce violent actions by Cal, Kyle Rittenauer. Uh, Al Jazeera, during debate, Trump refuses to condemn white supremacy. National, uh, what is this? Nationalfile.com, Trump refuses to condemn Proud Boys. The Refinery29.com, Trump refuses to condemn Proud Boys is white supremacy. The Time.com, Trump, Donald Trump refuses to, give, to condemn KKK disavow endorsement. Um, CNN, Van Jones, Trump refused to condemn white supremacy. Bloomberg.com, Trump refuses to condemn white supremacists. Thecut.com, Trump refused to condemn white supremacists. Chicago Tribune, Tr Trump-Biden debate, Trump interrupts with taunts, which were great, by the way. Globalnews.com, .ca, so this is Canada. Donald Trump refuses to condemn white supremacy. The Guardian, um, athletes dismayed by Trump's refusal to condemn white supremacy. Forbes.com, Biden calls Trump weak for refusing to condemn armed militia. Uh, News1.com, first debate, Trump refuses to condemn white supremacy. DavidDuke.com, what is this? Trump dares to refuse white to condemn white people. Well, that's fake. We already know who David Duke is. The mercurynews.com. Trump won't condemn violence by white wing agitators. Raw story. Trump definitely refuses to condemn extremist groups. Democracy now. Trump refuses to condemn white supremacists or rule out something or other. Uh, factcheck.org. Trump has condemned white supremacists. Factcheck.org. Truthout.org, Trump's refusal to condemn Proud Boys at debate reflects. Okay, so I just read 20 different, you know, titles. So if you imagine, if you're the average American who has been taught to just turn on the news and believe whatever they say, and that they're so right, and they're, you know, they are bipartisan, they're just reporting, but that they're not actors and that they don't have a specific agenda then you're going to believe this. And if you're the average black person in particular, because you're already triggered by any time that your democratic handlers say racism, you're already triggered. And as soon as they tell you on multiple outlets with the same byline on every single article that he confuses to condone white supremacists, though fact checkers has even said that's false, you're going to believe it. And if you have three months, of, excuse me, three years of this happening, you're going to say he's the most hated person in America. He's the person you hate. You know, you're just, you just got all this stuff. But most people who are reading this have never even seen the full clip when he, when they're constantly putting in, there's good people on both sides. Most people haven't seen the full clip, but I'm going to show it to you today. So hang on. Fine people. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. 
know, he called all those folks to walk out of that. They were near Nazi. So for those of you who have not seen that, I am very pleased to have shown you that. And I wrote on my little sticky note exactly what he said. And so I'm going to repeat it. And so you have fine people on both sides and you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists. They should be condemned totally. And then he goes on with his statement. So why is it that the main uh, mainstream media starts at find people on both sides and stops and doesn't say what he said exactly after that sentence? Why is it that every mainstream uh, news outlet only gives you that clipped? If that shouldn't make you suspect as to what else they are lying about and why are they all um, you know, within this pact to continuously spread propaganda um, about the president and they understand already that most of the American public is pretty much unwilling to research. And if they do, they're going to use Google, which, as I just read to you, will give you what you want to hear, will give you what you want to see based on your algorithms and your history. Um, and so it's very difficult for people to get the full story and the full news if they are unaccustomed to researching other outlets, if they have never even been informed that, hey, maybe CNN lies. Hey, maybe, you know, MSNBC is lying. Maybe I need to get a different browser and do my own research or follow people that I don't agree with who are quote unquote conservative, but at least open myself up to listen to the other side so that I can get both points of view. I mean, generally speaking, that used to be things that professors used to teach college students to get both sides, even when you're writing a paper. Um, but at this point, everyone's being taught, just listen to the state sponsored, um, if, or at least the dark state, deep state sponsored news outlets who are all telling you the same thing. Form your opinion based on what you have been told and you are not to research anything else or get any opposing information. And to me, that is the epitome of a socialist slash communist uh, society where you are only given one narrative. Uh, you know, China will censor people with their internet searches, certain sites they can't go to. Um, this is what we're living in right now, but people don't want to hear it because they've already been inundated with a narrative that they have bought hook, line, and sinker for, you know, five, six years now. And so I just wanted to share that with you all. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm going to end this video with a, another clip, in case you haven't seen it, where uh, Trump is giving a speech and he is completely denouncing and disavowing uh, the white supremacist groups, the KKK and everywhere else. The news is out there. It's just, do you want to believe what you've been told and be a little slave? Or do you want to actually be a thinking human being that is capable of listening to, you know, the contrary, the other side, and then judge for yourself and not believe the lie that, you know, mainstream media is unbiased. And so before I uh, go roll into this clip and end the video, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for all the new subscribers. I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing my videos. I've gotten, you know, comments in my, um, inbox saying people are sending it to people, my videos to people they know, in hopes that it would at least uh, open their eyes to, hey, maybe there's something to this other side. Maybe they aren't just a bunch of white supremacist kooks um, or, you know, stodgy conservatives who hate all black people or whatever you, whatever you, you know, you might be thinking. But there's a lot of people who have, even in my DMs and Instagram, Black people, Latina people, who said they've recently switched because they finally did the research because it was just getting so ridiculous. And not even switch necessarily to Republican, but that they just decided to be independent and they realized that they had been lied to all these years and they're finally realizing that as a thinking adult, they need to do their own research and understand that everybody that they've previously been researching has been lying to them and telling them the same story. And as you saw in the other news uh, clips that I was showing you, the news titles, they're all copying, pasting the same script. If that doesn't look suspect, I don't know what is, because when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, the news used to be all types of different you know, titles and all different types of takes on the same subject. Now it's all the same story. Shouldn't that make you suspect? I mean, seriously, and they call themselves journalists. So I'm Leah Love. You can find me 
you know, here. If you are new, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, share as always with your friends and family and your foes. And also follow me on Instagram if you are not yet, Leah Love Online. I am there. The page is popping and it's on fire. Lots of discussion, lots of debates, lots of fighting between people. It's really a hot mess sometimes. And I just look at it, read through some of it, but I can't keep up because of all the notifications. But I'm going to keep giving you the truth as I see it and researching as much as I can and bringing it to you here live and direct. So I will see you next time. So let me roll this clip of Trump. So for those of you who have not seen that, I am very pleased to have shown you that. And I wrote on my little sticky note exactly what he said. And so I'm going to repeat it. And so you have fine people on both sides and you had people and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists. They should be condemned totally. And then he goes on with his statement. So why is it that the main uh, mainstream media starts at find people on both sides and stops and doesn't say what he said exactly after that sentence? Why is it that every mainstream uh, news outlet only gives you that clip? If that shouldn't make you suspect as to what else they are lying about and why are they all, um, you know, within this pact to continuously spread propaganda um, about the president. And they understand already that most of the American public is pretty much unwilling to research. And if they do, they're going to use Google, which, as I just read to you, will give you what you want to hear will give you what you want to see based on your algorithms and your history. Um, and so it's very difficult for people to get the full story and the full news. Do you believe that justice was served in the Breonna Taylor case in Kentucky? And what is your message to the black community who believe that perhaps justice was not served by the decision that was rendered by the grand jury in Kentucky? Well, my message is that I love the black community and I've done more for the black community than any other president. And I say, uh, with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln, and I mean that with opportunity zones and with uh, criminal justice reform, with pr uh, prison reform, with what we've done for historically black universities, colleges, schools, what we've done. It's uh, nobody's done more. Abraham Lincoln, let's give him the nod. But beyond that, nobody's done more. I love the black community. Uh, I don't know enough about it. I heard a decision was just made. Uh, we've been together here, and so we haven't discussed it. But after I see what the decision is, I will have a comment on it. OK, thank you. Democrat politicians like Joe Biden have taken black voters for granted. They made you big promises before every election. And then the moment they got to Washington, they abandoned you and they sold you out. The Democrat Party used you and they lied to you every single time. You know it better than anybody else knows it. The Democrats will always take back the vote. What they want to do is they'll take that vote back. They want to take the black voter for granted, and they have taken the black voter for granted. And it's not fair, it's not right, and it's not going to happen. That was President Trump appealing to African-American voters during a campaign event in Atlanta on Friday, where he unveiled his second-term plan to promote black economic empowerment.